Hey guys, welcome back to Stinson Farms. I'm over here at my cane crop tonight, and I'm gonna try to get this cut. Uh, it's uh, it's well past maturity. Uh, not you know, it's not hurting, but it's uh, it's definitely ready to cut. And if you watched some earlier videos, I talked about uh, I planted this cane uh, just for the seed, basically. I ordered some seed, it's sugar drip, some of the old style uh, sorghum. And I just planted one row. And if you can see, a lot of it's down. But that is, uh, that's a characteristic of this style cane or this, uh, uh, this variety. Uh, it'll do that sometimes. But uh, the seed are good and mature. Uh, I'm gonna get, a, I'm gonna try to get the cane cut. I'm gonna cut the heads off, dry the heads, and get the uh, seed uh, harvested uh, to plant next year. But I decided since I've got this, uh, my dad, he used to make sorghum, uh, made sorghum for like 30 years. I've got all the equipment here, uh, the meal, the evaporator pan, and all that. And this is not gonna be enough cane to make enough juice to even come close to filling that pan up. So. I'm gonna try to cook it, but I'm just gonna cook it in a pan, uh, you know, like a, a stove top pan. I've seen some people do that, and I just wanna cook down what I've got and just go through the uh, the steps of, of cutting it, uh, stripping it, cutting it, and grinding it, and then, uh, of course, cooking it. So my plans is possibly, uh, maybe next year, plant about a half acre and uh, get all the old equipment out and uh, make a little sorghum. Now, I will have to use the uh, sorghum meal uh, to grind the juice uh, out of the cane this year, and uh, I'll, I'll pull that out of the barn and clean it up, and we'll, we'll do that. But right now, I wanna get this cut. If you can see the heads, I get a head down here. You can see this head, the seed is really mature and exact it is actually the seed is already hard and uh, at the time yeah, see, I can't even squeeze that seed, which that's good. But Daddy always let it get to what he called in the dough and you could squeeze the head, it wasn't juicy but it was still soft enough you could squeeze it and that's when he tried to, to cut it. To make sorghum so this is definitely uh mature enough to do that so first off uh this, and, this, and i won't be able to use this to do all of it because it's down but i want to show you this is something we made uh out of a tobacco stick and what it's called is a fodder knocker now if you don't know what fodder is fodder is the leaves that's on the cane uh that's what that's what it's called is fodder if you'll notice, the stick has been uh, sanded down to a, to a fine edge, and then it's got some notches cut in it. And what this is used for is to knock the fodder off of the cane while it's still standing. Now, I'll probably just cut this and uh, uh, strip the leaves off the hand the more than I've got, especially with some of it down. But I want to show you how this works, because this is old school. This is how they used to do it. So I think you get the idea. As you can see, uh, most of the leaves are off. I could get some of the others, but you can't hardly get every one of them with this anyway. But that's what you do. You knock the fodder off of it. Uh, you want the leaves off of it before uh, you run it through the mill to grind it. And uh, we have in the past made sorghum uh, without stripping the leaves off. Uh, it does fine. Uh, 
uh, it just it absorbs a little bit of the juice as it's going through so you lose a, you lose a little juice but uh, so this is gonna be a two or three part video I just wanted to show you that I'm gonna cut some uh, oh I'm gonna cut this I'm gonna get it on the wagon uh, and I'm gonna cut the heads off and then here in a day or so uh, when I've got a little more time uh, we'll get this ground up and we'll uh, uh, cook it and see how it turns out so I just want to show y'all that this afternoon and I'm, I'm going to get busy and get this cut. <clears throat> so I'm just going to cut this with the back of knife and uh, throw it here on the wagon. I'll, uh, I'll get it stripped and get the heads and everything cut off of it uh, after I get done. And uh, then we'll grind this up here in a couple of days. Some of this is down and it's kind of starting to make a mess so I need to get it out of the field. But you get the idea. Uh, I'm just going to repeat that all the way down through there and get this whole row cut on the wagon. I do want to show you something. I don't know how well it shows up standing up. But if you look at my thumb and look at that stalk, that stalk is a good inch wide. Uh, probably seven to eight feet long. Uh, really good stalk of cane. And that'll make some really good juice. But uh, like I said, I've only got one roll of it, so it's not going to make a lot of sorghum, but it will cook down and make a little bit. And these uh, seed, I get these heads dried out, get this seed planted next year, and we're going to have a good little patch of cane. But I'll, uh, I'll be back when I get the trailer loaded and I'm cutting the heads off. All right, so we got it cut. It's a little bit. A little bit more than I expected actually but it's not a lot there but it'll make a little juice and we'll cook it down what I gotta do now is just I'll strip it by hand and lay the strip cane back here on the back of the wagon and then we'll run it through the mill after it's stripped got most of the heads cut off uh, quite a few heads I don't know I started with a thousand seed this spring is what I planted I didn't get a full stand on those and then I don't know there's a few hundred seed per head uh, there would be well enough there to do a half acre and this is uh, open pollinated uh, as I said it's an old variety and uh, might not get a hundred percent stand but if I can get a 75 percent stand I'll be happy with it so I won't be stripping this today I'll get back to it here in a day or so but we'll get it stripped and uh, I'll uh, I'll bring y'all back whenever we're working on it again all right guys we're back it's a couple days later uh we've got all the cane stripped i got it here on the wagon what there is of it it's not a lot actually a little more than what i expected but we got it all stripped uh pretty much all the heads cut off of it you may find one here or there but that's not going to be a big deal uh got about three 50 pound seed sacks full of heads and uh there should be plenty of seed for next year well what we're going to do this morning uh, to finish up with this video we're going to uh, uh, grind this cane and we'll do that by running it through this mill and this mill is made to uh, to grind the cane it's, it's called grinding it or that's the, what we say it's not really grinding it it's squeezing the juice out of it and uh, the uh, stalk will come out on the other side uh, and the juice will go down in the bottom uh, of this uh, tray here and it'll run out this spout and we've got a couple of tubs here we're going to cast the juice in uh, now we'll strain it uh, as it goes in uh, we'll strain it again as we put it in the uh, pot to cook it and uh, like i told you before i'm not going to use an evaporator pan uh, we have one but it's not enough uh, cane here to make enough juice to even fill it up so we're just going to uh, 
get the juice out of this and we're gonna cook it down uh, in a pan uh, and see if it works. I've never done done it that way, but I've seen it done that way and I know it works and, and we're, we're just gonna have just a little bit anyway. So that's how we're gonna cook it. So if you're a little bit interested in this meal, uh, well, let me, let me show you something down here and then I'll explain something about the meal. So this piece here, is what's made originally to sit the shaft top the shaft coming out top mill goes in here this piece would sit on top of it and then you would put a pole on top of this that would bolt to it uh, and so it's called a sweep and it would go around uh, you would tie a horse or something to the end of the pole and they would make a circle around the uh, mill and uh, it would turn the mill and that's how they used to grind what this has been modified we took this to a machine shop had the shaft cut down this big gear here on top is actually a gear off an old international baler i wish i knew the model of it but i don't uh, but that's what it is and we cut the shaft down to accept this gear this gear right here the drive gear is also off the same baler uh, and it is mounted to a rear end of an old truck which in turn is hooked to a PTO shaft and we run it with a tractor. Uh, not rocket science, but it works really well and uh, it's a whole lot better, it's a lot faster. Uh, plus, I don't wanna have a horse. So, this is the way we're gonna do it. So guys, we're gonna grind this, uh, we'll catch the juice, and uh, the last part, is we'll be cooking it down. We'll see you in a minute.
All right, so this is what we've got set up, how we're gonna cook. Uh, like I said, uh, we've always cooked from with an evaporator pan. Uh, it's a 10 foot pan, stainless steel. And it's, uh, it's made to where you put it in one end uh, and the juice ends deeper. And as it cooks, uh, it'll push it to the other end of the pan. Uh, but we don't have enough juice to even closely fill up the pan so we're just going to do it this way so i've got this stainless steel pot we're going to we got hooked up here to the little burner and we're going to uh, see if it'll uh, cook up and, and work like this and this this is going to go through stages uh, once it starts boiling it'll start foaming up it'll start creating skimmings and we'll have to keep getting the skimming off of it and i'll show you that and as it cooks down, uh, the skimmings are going to turn color from green to yellowish to brown. And then, of course, you'll have the end product uh, will be the uh, sorghum at the end. But uh, this little bit of or this pot full of juice right here, which is probably, I'd say, three gallons anyway, is going to uh, uh, not make much. It's going to be very little. Uh, finished product when we get done but it'll be enough to see how it, how it turns out so as it goes along I'll bring y'all along and, and show you how it goes all right so we we got it uh, boiling and uh, it's going to boil up you see the steam and it's going to cook all the water out of it and uh, it'll take a little while but like I said it'll go through stages of uh, I gotta keep messing with the gas to keep it from boiling over. I got a little bit too much in my pot. But it'll go through stages and we'll uh, we'll see the colors change. And uh, it's not really putting up putting on any skimmings or anything right now. At this stage, as it starts to thicken up, some it will. And uh, I'll bring you I'll bring you back and show you what th those look like. Uh, but you got to keep it. You got to keep it skimmed. You got to keep the green skimmings, especially off of it, because if they're allowed to stay on it and it mixes in with the uh, finished sorghum, then you, you'll be able to taste the green skimmings in it to give it a real bitter taste. So we want to make sure we keep those out as we go. But uh, I know you can't smell it, but if you could, uh, and you've ever been around it, then you'd recognize what it smells like. It's got a very unique smell cooking. But we'll, uh, we'll bring you back a minute. All right, we've been cooking for a little over two hours. And it's finally starting to cook down. It's not fast. In fact, I thought it'd be a little quicker than what it is doing it this way, but it's it's not quick. It's starting to change colors. We've gotten a few skimmings off of it, but it's uh, still cooking. So there it is right now. I don't know from the steam if you can see it that much, but I've got the heat turned down just a little. so I could see the juice and see what color it is. It's starting to darken up. It's still green and it's starting to get darker. I'm gonna let it boil here just a little bit more. And when it's boiling good, you can start to see a difference in the bubbles. As it starts to cook down, the bubbles will get larger. All right, I'll bring you back in a minute. All right, it's still got a little green cast to it, but it's getting a caramel color, kind of getting a little whiter. Uh, still not there yet, but it's uh, cooking its way down. That's the what I was telling you 
earlier about the bubbles looking different than what it does uh, when it's just uh, fresh juice. You can see how the bubbles are popping a little bit different. They're bigger bubbles. And whenever they get, it gets all the way cooked down, the bubbles even be larger than that. All right, so if you can see that, it's not there yet, but it's close. And this is what my dad always done. As it starting, starts to thicken up, you want it to like run off that spoon in a constant thick uh, stream. And it's not there just quite yet but it's pretty close. I turned the heat down and letting it uh, cook up down a little bit slower here so I don't want to scorch it accidentally, but it's, uh, it's getting close. And again, you can't smell it, I know, but if you've ever been around it making, you can tell that it's getting close by the smell. All right, so it's simmering down, and it is really about there. And I took some of it out, put on a little plate and see how it was ticking up, and it was good. So, you see how those bubbles are popping. So we're fixing to pull the heat and let this sit here a minute. Let some of the rest of the skimmings rise to the top, get them off, and then we'll pour it up. All right, so we got it. We got it poured up, uh, and we got, <coughs> excuse me, various size jars here, but we got it counted up. And, uh, of course, this is a quart jar, and uh, some of those are pints. Some of them's half pints. But all together, we figured up about three and a half quarts. So we got... Uh, around three and a half quarts out of roughly three gallon of juice. And I've got about three more gallon of juice that I'm gonna cook up now. So uh, it actually made more than I expected it to. And it's really good. It turned out good. Uh, the color uh, looks good. It's uh, looking a little darker here on the camera than what it looks by eye. But uh, what I've always been told and uh, what I've always heard is that uh, the color depends a lot on the type of ground uh, that it was raised on. And uh, it's the first time we ever raised any on this particular uh, spot of ground, so I didn't really know how it was gonna turn out. But anyway, that's it. So guys, that was just a video of, uh, we started at the beginning, uh, cane being ripe. Uh, we stripped it, cut it, uh, ground it, cooked it down, and this is what we come up with. Now, it worked good uh, with a little cooker. It took a while, took about three and a half hours to cook that down, but we got it cooked down and turned out good. But, uh, uh, and it always takes a while, even on the evaporator pan, to where you get to where you're actually uh, got molasses coming off the finished end. But, uh, uh, it took a little longer to cook this than what I expected, but it uh, it worked out good. I hope you enjoy that. Uh, it's just like I said, just a video of, of a little bit of sorghum. It's not how we traditionally done it. Uh, if things work out, maybe we'll get some planted next year. I'm saving the seed from what I grew this year, and we'll um, have about a half acre or so, and uh, that's plenty to get the evaporator pan out and get it set up. Uh, in order to do that, I've got to build a furnace and, and everything to get it uh, set on. I, I don't have any of that anymore. I just got the pan. So, uh, but that's it. That's how you make sorghum molasses. And uh, I know in this video I didn't say this is sugar drip. Uh, and I may have at the beginning of the video, but it's sugar drip. And it's an old variety of sorghum cane. And uh, it does really good around here. So, uh, I really appreciate it. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and we'll see you next time.